Hey everyone, welcome back to the TTA Performance YouTube channel. So one of the uh, new products that we're working on and prototyping right now is a custom intake manifold for the 301 Turbo. Now this, is, this intake manifold is actually designed to try to improve on the standard 301 cylinder heads. And so I'm going to show you a, a comparison of the stock turbo intake and also this fabricated intake that we're working on, the prototype intake, and the reasons why we're, we're doing that. So let's take a look at them. So what we have here is a stock 301 turbo intake manifold. Now, with conventional, I shouldn't say conventional, I like to use the word conventional for standard Pontiac heads, 326 through 455. Um, what I want to call this is this is your typical 301 intake manifold. Now there's only three intake manifolds that were factory offered uh, for the 301, none for the aftermarket as of yet. Uh, so you had three different versions. You had the turbo intake, you had the four barrel intake, and you had a two barrel intake. So this one right here is, is the turbo intake. So the turbo intake, because the turbocharger mounts right to the middle here, that's with the three bolt flange. And also the turbo intake had this port right here. This is a coolant passage. I may have explained this in a previous video, but basically this coolant passage is working in conjunction with the special thermostat that fits in here uh, to actually allow coolant flow through to the plenum that would be underneath the carburetor. And that's just to warm up the plenum in uh, cold drive for cold drivability, cold weather climate type things. Uh, otherwise you get kind of fuel puddling and stuff. May have explained that in previous videos also. But one of the biggest things about the any 301 intake manifold was the fact that when you look at it you have the now they numbered all the runners and, and because of the Siamese intake ports where basically one intake port uh, feeds two cylinders uh, so we have four runners basically for eight cylinders and they numbered them you know this is this this one feeds cylinders one and three this one feeds five and seven so on um, if you look, 5 and 7 is a much larger intake runner than any of the other ones, uh, especially at, at the actual port where it goes to the cylinder head. Um, and then if you look at the intake manifold, you will see that. You see this much larger intake runner, much larger opening, and then you have uh, the small runner or small intake opening here. Now, the other ones are just as small because the cylinder head is actually matching that. The cylinder head from the factory on a 301, the 57 port matches this. It's large, whereas the front cylinder for one and three is small to match the intake port here. But when you take the driver's side cylinder head and you go and you put it on the other side of the engine, now two and four gets that large port like five and seven did. But the intake manifold does not match that. They did not make the runner large. Uh, they, so five and seven is the only large runner on this whole deal. Now, the other confusing part is that when you look at the intake manifold gasket set for the 301, it has the large port for all four. So the gasket is much larger, the port size is much larger than the actual port of the, of the cylinder head and of the intake manifold. So it's kind of odd, but the, the gasket itself is large, like 5'7", on all four of them. So a lot of people, I shouldn't say a lot, but... Some people think, well, I'm going to gasket match my cylinder heads, and they're expecting a performance increase. But I don't see how that would actually take place because the runner's still small. And I always make the joke that you can't take a McDonald's uh, drinking straw for a milkshake and then put a coffee stirring straw in front of it and expect to get more uh, airflow. So to me, the intake manifold was the next restriction. Um, so that's when I decided let's try an experiment and what if we actually did open up the passages on the cylinder head and made an intake manifold where they all had the larger 5.7 style runner on all four corners. So let's take a look at the engine with the cylinder heads that I modified and show you the gaskets and everything. So here's the engine, and we modified these cylinder heads. And I may have showed this in another video, I can't remember, honestly. But you can see that it has the large, the gasket's already opened up to the large port. Here's the 5.7 port. There's no change here. That's just how it comes as cast. You can see I didn't really touch anything in there. And I might have cleaned it up a little bit. But it's basically matching the gasket. So then this port was much, much smaller to match the intake manifold, but the gasket stayed the same. So I went through and actually opened this 
support up to match the gasket. Same on, on the other side, I have tape on it right now. But, so these heads have been opened up. Not, this is not the only modification done to these cylinder heads. The cylinder heads I've also kind of massaged and I don't know if you really want to say ported uh, behind the valves and kind of got, basically tried to make it more efficient. But the other side is this, these cylinder heads actually have a larger intake valve. The stock intake valve on a 301 is actually 1.72 inches in diameter. Your exhaust is 1.5 inches. Uh, we went and put a 1.84 inch diameter intake valve in these heads and then of course kind of blended everything uh, you know, past the seat and, and stuff to kind of make them make the airflow more efficient. Didn't hog out a, a bunch of stuff, didn't you know, take out a ton of material or anything, just tried to clean it up and radius stuff to make things more efficient. So that's what's going on with the head. So now let's look at the intake manifold that we had made. So here's the intake manifold that we just had fabricated. Um, we're, we're dealing with, uh, we had some flanges laser cut, and you can see here that we actually had them uh, matched to the larger port size. And then we had some, this is all out of steel so that it could be welded, but it's basically a sheet metal, steel sheet metal intake manifold with larger runners on all four corners. It's a little crude, but uh, not terrible. Um, but we want to just prove out the design first. If this works and more power is made, the goal here is to, let me back up, yes. What is the goal of what we're trying to do? Why are we trying to make it flow more air? A lot of people will just say, well, just turn the boost up higher. Well, yeah, you could do that. Um, but at the same time, I'm always concerned, not really concerned, but... If I can make more power with less boost, why wouldn't I? Plus the fact of, I'm sure at some point there's going to be a saturation factor where diminishing returns. You're going to keep turning up the boost, keep turning up the boost. At some point, you're just not going to be able to, to flow more. Or the fact that the power increase is going to start to go away. You're not going to get as much of an increase per pound of boost than you were getting. Um, and what my goal is here is I want to try to make... The 301 cylinder head is poopy as it is. <laughs> and the 301 intake manifold, I'm trying to make them work. I'm trying to make them work better. Yes, you can look into putting conventional style 326 through 455 cylinder heads on it, you know, making a custom narrow intake manifold, you know, custom head gasket, you know, the whole the whole nine yards of, of you know going through all the work of putting the other cylinder head on. And that's great. It could be done. People are doing it. Um, my thing is, is, well, I'm going to try to do the 301 cylinder head and intake package first. Um, so got this all made up. If I can make more power because I'm flowing more air with the stock intake or stock style configuration of intake stock 301 style configuration of cylinder heads, why wouldn't we do that? If I can make the same power, if I make X amount of power at 16 pounds of boost with stock stuff and I can make the same horsepower with I don't know I'm just throwing a number out there 12 pounds of boost with this setup well that's pretty good plus if I can get more power out of it naturally aspirated it just have better throttle response and when it's not in boost actually be overall better too I would assume so uh, let's get this fitted up let's just see uh, how well it fits in in that uh, you know we'll put a um, a mock-up turbo on it and everything like that make sure all the clearances are good and we'll show you that next so here we have the intake manifold all mocked up uh, you can see it it actually fits pretty good um, so one of the things that will need to be done with this is that the uh, water crossover will have to be cut from an existing manifold intake manifold so what we did here is we actually uh, cut one off of a turbo because the turbo has this coolant passage uh, That's going to go up to that fitting right there for the plenum This actually puts hot water to the plenum when it is warming up in, in a cold climate uh, It works with the thermostat and I kind of outlined that before I believe so yeah, this this crossover was cut off of a uh, existing turbo intake bolted on separately it'll actually seal up to the timing cover but the intake itself bolted up. Um, we have the uh, a mock-up turbo on here for right now. We're showing that the bracket fits 
uh, really well. We got the gasket, you know, turbos fitting really nice. Um, and then of course we've got the, the support bracket on this side. That's all sitting there good. Um, you can see that the oil drain tube works out real nice. You know, even though, even with the, the bigger, wider uh, intake runner, we still have good clearance for the oil drain tube. So it's going to be interesting to see how this one works out. But I'm excited about it, so we'll keep working on it. So I wanted to go over a few things about the intake manifold uh, and some theory and possibly actual fact as to why it is kind of designed the, the way it is. So looking at the, the pictures and the video, you see that the um, there's a total of four intake runners going to all eight cylinders. So each, each intake runner is responsible for two adjacent cylinders. So why is it that one, three, uh, two, four, and six, eight are small, but yet five, seven is larger? So it's not so much about why are they small. I think the, the looking at it the other way. So why is five, seven larger than the other three port, uh, the other three runners? So when you're, I remember reading something uh, a while back on the old uh, message boards from the 301 garage uh, forum. Unfortunately, it's it's no longer around. And the uh, what was stated was that an engineer from Pontiac had said it had to do with the firing order. And this kind of makes sense because when you look at the firing order, 18436572, 5, 7, 2, 5 and 7 fire sequentially, one right after the other. And in my opinion, it looks like the engineers were concerned that cylinder number five was going to take the intake charge uh, and cylinder number seven, which would be opening its valve uh, shortly after or pretty close to the same time, um, was actually going to get starved and was not going to have enough air fuel to come into that cylinder. So they made the, the intake runner larger. They made the intake port and the cylinder head larger. Um, now the other three are obviously smaller and, and this is my opinion as to why the other three are smaller at the time when this engine was designed the first year for the 301 was 1977 at that time the EPA you know government's kind of involved with uh, fuel economy standards emission standards things like that the EPA is involved um, there's a lot of there's fuel shortages that are happening oil embargoes all that stuff and I think that with regulation coming down that, you know, CAFE was coming about, C-A-F-E, Corporate Average Fuel Economy. They were trying to tell the manufacturers, government, EPA was trying to tell the manufacturers, look, out of all the cars that you sell, in, you have to average the fuel economy of all the, all the different types of vehicles that you sell. So if you sell, you know, a lot of small vehicles that are very fuel efficient, and maybe that average is, you know, maybe those cars average somewhere around 30 miles to the gallon, but then you go and sell a Corvette or some other performance car, and, you know, it gets 12 miles to the gallon. Well, now you have to average those out. And there was a number that they were shooting for, and that number would ratchet up every year, or every, I don't know how it, all the details that were all about it. I know it's, it, I think the government was pretty aggressive with those standards and saying that those standards were very high. And I think that the many, the, the manufacturer, GM, Ford, everybody was scrambling trying to figure out how are we going to use less fuel in our engines without enough time to create a, a clean slate engine, basically, uh, uh, designing, you know, it takes time to design and test and, you know, do all this stuff, uh, prototype, research and development, if you're going to try to do a new engine from a clean sheet that has a specific goal in mind. Um, I think that's where the 301 came in. I think that's where the Oldsmobile 260 uh, V8 came in. Um, Ford, actually, in, I think, 1980, the Mustang got the 255 cubic inch small block Ford. Um, and a lot of them just, I think they just came down to less cubic inch, less air intake means less fuel needs to be put into the engine to, to uh, get it to run. And that's how we're going to do it. It's the easiest thing to go off of is if you want to burn less fuel, take in less air. Uh, and if you're using less air and less fuel, you're going to put out less emissions. 
you're also going to make less horsepower. <laughs> so I think that's that's how all this came about. And that's now there is a kind of a small benefit to having the smaller intake port. Uh, the smaller intake ports create higher velocities. So yeah, you're not getting the volume of air and the flow of air, the CFM of air going into the engine efficiently, but it's coming in really fast and possibly very turbulent, which is very good for mixing the air and fuel together, getting that atomization going. So with a high velocity of air movement, maybe not so much as a lot of uh, volume of air, but high velocity of air can potentially give you good uh, low end torque. It, it tries to fill the cylinder quickly. Uh, it just doesn't have a lot to go in it. So I think I think the 301 kind of has that. It, it, it kind of had that quick uh, low end torque, you know, right off idle, but it just couldn't breathe up top. It, it just didn't have any RPM because the heads were so small, the valves were small, you just weren't filling the cylinder, um, you know, especially with the intake runners being small and, and so on. That's kind of where I was coming from with this whole design, with this whole test, just to see what would happen. Does it make sense if we opened up all the ports and made larger runners, is it going to make more power? So that's what we're here to find out, and we're going to, we're going to test that theory. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. I uh, hope you appreciate the video, and as soon as I can get uh, more testing done and more results from it, good or bad, uh, be sure you know to share it with you guys and let you know. So until next time, thanks for watching.